Greetings hobbies, this is Arthur Sands of Vool, and in this tutorial we're going to be having a look at making some sci-fi floor tiles, and for this we're going to be using the hard ops and box cutter add-ons, though you could do most of this without, it just makes this a lot quicker and easier, and you'll see why. So to start with, we've got this cube just here, and I'm going to press N to bring out the M panel, and I'm going to change the sizes of this. I want this 1mm in height, and I want this 30 by 30 and we're going to start with this so that we can make a floor panel that we can add on or array so that we get a range of floor panels. Now to start with I'm just going to tab and go into face mode. Obviously if you don't have machine tools then you could just use this using the options at the top but honestly machine tools is fantastic so I don't know why you wouldn't get it. So all I'm going to do is on this face just press I to inset it slightly and I'm just going to inset that a little bit and then E to extrude it out and type 2 to get that 2 millimeters in height. This should give some nice distance between our floor panels when we add our modifiers. So for example, if I add my array in here, we can see this is adding a good gap so we can see where the floor panels are. Right, next up, let's start making the internals or the details of this floor panel. So all I'm gonna do is press I again. In fact, let's go into top down view so we can get a good view of how thick this is gonna be. And I'm gonna go somewhere around there I think I don't want this too thick but I want it to be noticeable now at this point and this is something we're going to use later I'm going to press ctrl and r and add in a loop just there and then I'm going to press q and curve extract and then left click with ctrl to just bring that into a new object so we've got now this and I'm going to get rid of that array for that so we've just got this as a separate object I'll talk about why we're doing that later but all I'm going to do is call that rivets edge and then I'm just going to hide that for now if we can get rid of it. So back to this and let's go into vertex mode. So I'm going to select these four vertices and I'm going to press Control shift and B to bevel them just so we've got a nice interesting edge shape here and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just go back into face mode and I'm going to grab this face and for reasons you'll see later we want this as a separate object. So again, I'm going to press Q, go to Curve Extract, but this time I'm going to hold down Shift to make what we call a plate. And what that will do is that is going to make something that I can change in height. Now, what I find a useful trick here is to press the 2 button, and that means now as high as it is, it is also that far down. So I can get a good view now that that is going the same distance down as it is up. Again, I don't want this array because it does copy the modifiers that are already there. Let's get rid of that. And you can see that we've got this the same thickness down as it is up. So that's pressing two on the number pad so that we have that double thickness. Then I'm gonna select that, shift select the object and press control and minus. And if this has come up as fast, it's probably not gonna work. You need to come down here or you could click on this and where you've got this Boolean and it's fast, you can change it to exact. Do notice that hard ops is very good and instantly puts these booleans above the array modifier. That's why I wanted to have this array modifier to demonstrate this, which is gonna save a lot of time. You don't have to fiddle around with things. So this is looking pretty good at this point. It's quite nice as a basic shape, but let's make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna click on the cutter object and I'm now gonna cut the cutter object. People often do this in the wrong order. They start trying to add things into this shape and you'll see what I'm gonna do in a second. It is much easier to just delete things out of the cutter. So I'm gonna press Z to go into top down view and I'm gonna press Alt W to activate box cutter D and we want an end on cutter. So I'm just gonna select that, escape out of it and then do something like that, that and then back there. So we've got that cut. I'm then gonna select the object that's being cut, Alt and X, and I'm gonna press D to change this to modifier. And I'm gonna click that side to modify it. That was using machine tools, not hard ops. And now we can see that that's both the same on either side. And all I want to do is again, selecting this one, press Alt and X, and I want to mirror on the Y, which means we've now got this the same thickness so it's basically symmetrical. I can press H and hide this, and now we've got 
add cart object and I just fiddle around with some of the settings there to make that easier to see. If you really want it easier to see, you could put shadow on and that makes it a little bit clearer, but everything's a bit darker. Let's get rid of that M panel. So at this point, we've got our basic panel. In fact, I think this is probably a bit too deep. So I'm gonna click on it, press Q and ever scroll, and I'm just gonna grab this and G and Z that up. So we've got something that's a little bit inset and then H to hide it, but nothing as extreme as it was. And obviously, if you don't like it, you can just go to ever scroll, click it, and then G and Z, and you can move that up or down, however deep you want it to be, so that it's gonna be something that's recognizable, but not gonna get in the way of the models. And obviously we can array this as much as we want so that we've got this going. So we can go however many in the X direction. And then if we need to, we can always add another modifier and array instead of the X direction in the Y direction. And we've got something like that could be in a corridor. So really nice, quick and easy to do. And we've got a nice sci-fi looking corridor, but it's a bit boring. And that's the bit that I really wanted to focus on now is trying to reduce this. Well, it's all just the same thing. Now, if we're looking at a totally utilitarian view, this probably would be the same, but we don't want that. We want to add a little bit of interest. I'm gonna press W to get out of box cutter and we're gonna start dealing with that. So first things first, what I'm gonna do is press Shift and D to duplicate that. And instantly we'll notice there's a problem. If I lift this up, it gets rid of all of the detail. And the reason for that is even though we've still got the booleans, if I press G and move this down, we'll see it starts intersecting with where those cutters are. So it's not taking the cutters with it. Now we want to solve that problem and this isn't too difficult to do. All we need to do is make all of our cutters visible so I can click there and then I have to come down and then make those visible. It all gets a little bit tedious. Now at this point, that's fine and I can do that. But it is much quicker and easier if I just press with it selected Q, go down to operations and uniqueify and you just hold shift while using it. And then all I need to do is press, let's say Y. So I'm gonna do it in the Y direction. And what that's done is that's made a copy of all of the cutters. And what's really clever about this is it hasn't just made a copy of this cutter, it's made a copy of the cutter that's cutting the cutter, which means that you can move things around really quickly. And coming on this, I'm gonna get rid of those two arrays because it's just to make a little add-on. And what I can do now is start changing this if I want to. And because I've already got all of these cutters here, it's sped everything up. Now, I've just realized I've forgotten to do something, so I'm actually gonna get rid of that. And we're gonna come back to this one. And we're gonna come back to our rivets edge that we've got here. And I'm gonna select that and go into vertex mode. So what you can see here is we've now got these vertices, one in each corner, and that's what I wanted. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift and A, and I'm going to bring in a cylinder. It's got 32 vertices, that's probably gonna be enough for this. So what I want is I want this a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna go and scale it, something like that, and then I want to make this a little bit taller on the Z-axis, You'll notice this is a little bit annoying because it's inside the cube, but there's a reason for this. I want this to have the same origin as my edge does. So, I mean, there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'm actually gonna press G and Z to raise this up, and then I'm going to press Shift and S. This is using machine tools again. So I'm gonna put the cursor to the selected. You could do this by object, snap, and then cursor to selected, and then I'm gonna to come to my edge, Shift and S, and I'm gonna turn my origin to the cursor. So now this and the river edge has the cursor in the same place. So now what we're gonna do is parent this object to the edge. So I'm just gonna press Shift and select the edge. This is always annoying to do when there's something else. In fact, let's just press H to hide that. So click that, Shift click that, Control and P, and I want to parent to the object. And then I can select this, go into Object Properties, instancing and I want instances on each of the vertices and hopefully you can see where this is going if I just unhide my cube so what I can do now theoretically is just cut these out of the object now what's really cool about this is if I want to I could go into edge mode select all of these edges and press ctrl e and subdivide and I could put another one halfway along actually I quite like that so I think I'm going to stick with that and just before I finalize this, I'm gonna take this, let's have a look at how wide this is. 
let's go on the item. So it's 0 0.86. I'm just going to round this up to one and one. So we've got these one millimeter holes. So now all I need to do is just select these. Select the object I want last, control and minus, and I'm going to change this off of fast to exact, and then we can just hide each one of them. And we've got these little rivet holes or these screw holes, and we can hide that, and I can hide my edge. So, a quick way of adding that in. Oh, interestingly, that doesn't seem to have put everything to the bottom. Let's minimize all of that. And we're going to have to move those arrays down. So now that's affecting everything. So let's grab that. So Q, operations, shift and uniquify. And then I'm going to press Y to keep that on the Y axis. Let's put that over there and let's get rid of those two arrays. And now I can do whatever I want to with this because it's really easy to make a copy with all of these different bits in place. It stops me having to go through and find all of these cutters on top of cutters. And once you've got multiples of these, finding which ones to select is a real pain. So this is gonna save a lot of time. So all I'd need to do is say I wanted to have something in here and I wanted to have an extra bit. I can now just Alt and W and again, maybe let's have a bigger one there, something like that. And because it's mirrored and that's at the bottom of the stack, it's keeping everything symmetrical. And if I wanted to, I can come here and Q operations and shift click uniquify. Let's bring this along the X axis. And for this one, we're going to add another bit. So let's just D for box cutter, grab a cube and we could do something like that. And you'll see how easy this uniquify makes it to just keep adding little bits of detail without having to find all of these cutters. I will say, if you're gonna keep using something with the Q menu, you do have this option for quick favorites. Now at the moment, I just have my Smart Apply and my Dice in there, which is the two things that I probably use most often. But if you want to, you can just go to Operations, go on Unicify, right click, and then click Add to Quick Favorites. And what that means is you can just press Q and it comes up with your favorites. Obviously, you don't want too many things here because otherwise it takes away the point. It just makes everything harder to find. Okay, and I will also say that I've got my Smart Apply at the top because what that allows me to do is if I want to come here and I want to apply everything, I can just put QQ and Enter and that's Smart Applied it. So it's done all of the modifiers. So generally, the one that you use most, try to get it at the top. And then if we, I'm just going to QQ and then for that one, I'm going to Q, Shift Click Uniquify just so I've got one that's always spare. Always try to keep an object spare so you can always go back and change things. QQ, Smart Apply, and then all I need to do is go into Vertex Mode, A, P, Buy Loose Parts, and now we've separated this so each of these are individual. So for example, I could delete that one and delete that one and grab this. Press W to get rid of Box Cutter and let's go with vertex selection and i'm going to press g and then i can snap this oh, let's put it over there and then g to snap that one there and this one let's g to snap that one there so now what we've got is our corridor but we have a little bit of variation on each of these and you could make as many variations as you want for example in the past we've done how to make a mesh and i've got a link to that in the top right hand corner so you could even put one of those in there but it just means we've got a little bit of variety as we go along so that was a quick look at how rapidly we can make things once we've got these add-ons like hard ops and box cutter and how useful little things are like that uniquify tool that just speeds everything up and just makes our lives a little bit easier. And I would say it is a paid for add-on, but it is definitely worth the expense. There's also a link to that in the description. I do not have affiliate links with any of the people that make add-ons. They made it, they deserve the money. I'm not taking any money off of them for when they've made such a good product. Honestly, it's great. I would really recommend you get it. Well, thank you for watching. I hope that's been useful to you and hopefully that's gonna give you some ideas of what you can do with some of these add-ons. Please do subscribe if you're not subscribed already and if you found that useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave the video a like as it helps YouTube decide to show it to other people. Have a great day, guys.